Hello and welcome to another edition of our wonderful, amazing, and powerful Discover Love Academy. I am Jacqueline Nichols, founder and creator, and also professional matchmaker for Discover Love Matches. With all my years of working with such an amazing, dynamic, powerful, just awesome <laughs> singles, I realized that everybody learns different and needs different exposures to experiences. So as we continued on our Discover Love Academy program, I'm so enjoying bringing back our speakers every quarter so that you can learn from the same people and really take this information to heart. So we are so excited to tell you about our newest and awesomest speaker for this edition of our Love Academy. Camille, I want you to tell us about you, why you're part of Discover Love Academy, and uh, we're going to dive right into the topic right after. Happy to. Um, thanks so much, Jacqueline. So. <clears throat> I'm Camille Virginia, founder of Master Offline Dating. And I think when you and I were talking, it was like you didn't really have like an offline focused aspect to discover love. And, you know, that's my, my uh, area of expertise. It's what I'm very passionate about. And so, you know, when we were talking about, you know, everything you're doing with Discover Love, I was just like, oh, I'd love to bring this, uh, this expertise <laughs> to your members. So, exactly. yeah, because it's such a lost art, you know, unfortunately, um, just with online dating and apps and stuff, which can totally work, um, but not everyone necessarily wants to be on those. And so to kind of bring back, back those skills that we have to use to meet someone, um, for those who want to go back to that, but just don't really know where to start, I love helping with that. Oh, I love it. And it is so important. It's how it worked in the good old days. So, you know, when people deny themselves the opportunity just for that organic, spontaneous match, it's, it's too bad because there's so many great things. And this is a huge reason why I actually host a ton of get togethers, happy hours, mingle, social activities that really are about bringing people together on a more natural level so that they can, you know, see people they know, see new people. But it's amazing how many people are so unsure of what to do because we have created this world of so much online. So I love that you are saying, hey, let's get offline and figure out how to meet people. So it makes a big difference. So talk a little bit more about your own business and how you do it for your clients. Sure. Um, so I work uh, single women at the moment. And, you know, I'm so impressed by, you know, people like you who are able to handle both men and women. That's, it's, that's a lot. Um, cause it's just, you know, as we'll get into with our topic, there's, there's the masculine, there's the feminine and, you know, everyone has kind of a mix of both. So, um, how I work with my clients is through, um, courses online, actually online courses for offline dating. Um, I also have, uh, private coaching clients and group coaching boot camps, And, um, I just launched my community membership group. So I'm really excited oh. about that. I think that's awesome. You know, even though as a teacher and educator and inspirer that you do, we still have to use online technology to help us teach people how to get offline. So you still get the fix that we need, you know, that internet connection. But then it's really about getting out there and having that next layer of information and knowing what to do because we have gotten so spell check corrected in a way of just like we can look at our phone, we can think about what we're going to say, but how to talk spontaneous, how to, you know, just get out there and meet people. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I love how you put it is that that gives us our fix and gets to expand our reach. Cause I, I have women from like 90 different countries on my email list and I wouldn't be able to reach them otherwise in Indonesia or Israel or South Africa. Um, but they have every right to, to want these skills too, because at the core, we're all humans, you know, it doesn't matter if we're European or Australian or, you know, any, we're all human. And so we all have this basic need to connect with each other. So. Exactly. Well, I love the fact as you started to touch on it and we were going to bring it up for our class time is the feminine masculine energy. And I'm a huge believer of this, but as I've taught over the years, I've realized some people don't really understand what that means. So can you kind of dive in so we understand better what you're referring to? Sure. Um, and, and I'm happy to share my own kind of struggle along the way to understand what this means as well, because Lord knows that was a thing. <laughs> 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 um, so 
Yeah. With the masculine and feminine energy, we all have like, as no matter what gender we are or how we identify, we all have a mix of, of both of those. And there's kind of like a spectrum. Um, a lot of, you know, women tend to have more of the feminine energy. Uh, a lot of men have tend to have more of the masculine, but there can also be, you know, men who are, have a more feminine energy, that kind of thing. So masculine energy, I would say is more, um, like taking the lead, wanting to be that provider that, um, you know, kind of like the, the making things happen, the push, uh, feminine energy, I would describe more as like being open to receive the nurturer, the softer side, not less powerful, but just powerful in a different way, leading with a different right. energy and approach. That, that makes a lot of sense. And it is not about which is more powerful or less powerful. It's a different way that the energy is being delivered. So that is so perfect. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, a lot of at least, you know, speaking from the female side, it's been tough because in our modern age, you know, we have really changed our roles a lot, you know, back even like 70, 80 years ago, or God, not even that far. Um, men tended to be, you know, always pay for the dates and always uh, kind of provide in that way because their salaries were higher. And so that was kind of that, that balance. And now, you know, not that I don't really want to comment on the salary, you know, balance, but it, it's a lot closer to where it used to be uh, between men and women. And so with that, it's kind of this women are like kick and butt in the career world. And then they kind of, even though they, that's, that's part of their energy, which is great, but they also have still have that feminine side, uh, which is more kind of, again, you know, letting someone come to you being open to receive. And, but if they take the kind of that work energy to the date a lot of guys don't really know what to do with that. It's also not fun for the women because we, and I know from, again, experience of staying in that masculine, make things done um, or make things happen energy, get stuff done, which is great. But on the date, you know, for me, it always felt off. It was comfortable because I did it so often in my corporate career, but I, it didn't feel good to bring to a date, but I didn't really know what else to do because I hadn't really kind of let myself go into that more feminine energy, which was always a part of me. It just kind of went to sleep a little bit for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And when it's a matter of, especially like your work focus, your commitment, you know, you've got to get stuff done in a work brain. And this is something I'm always talking with clients on like, how do I change the hat and switch the dial over so that you can get out of the mode of boardroom and deadlines and just checking off the to-do list and coming from that income producing passion level, I guess is a way to think about it. And then to stop and kind of softening yourself because this has been something that I've definitely heard from the men that they get kind of frustrated when they're on a date and they just feel like there's such a heavy energy because she's still in work brain mode and it's not that he wants to discount her executive level and he thinks that's awesome and sexy and beautiful but it's really been a matter of knowing okay do I take the lead do I not take the lead do you want to take the lead like you know so many gentlemen I see them just trying to read the woman and trying to respect where she's coming from, they're more flexible on it. And women are more quick to kind of judge like, well, he didn't open the door or he did open the door. And it's like, okay, so what do we want? You know, it's learning how to say that. So how do we, as women that are super strong corporate women, give a little bit of vulnerability to the feminine energy to let the guy know what it is that we actually want him to do so he can have a chance to be successful. So um, a few things with that, a few kind of uh, tips I would say that I have with that. Cause I, I like to have kind of, I kind of break things down to, okay, how can we do what's one thing you can do to improve in this area? Um, as opposed to kind of, you know, vague advice. I love to be like, all right, what's the action item? That's probably more masculine too, that I, <laughs> that I tend to do that. Uh, but again, this is my work. So I'm, you know, kind of in work mode. Uh, so I would say with the women that I work with, I have what is called a flip to feminine. And that is basically just finding a trigger that kind of gives you permission flips the switch in your brain from masculine boardroom conference room making stuff happen 
to feminine. And that could simply be like a five minute meditation, a spritz of perfume, reapplying makeup, changing your clothes, eating a piece of chocolate, having a glass of wine, getting a massage if you have time, just something so that it, it becomes kind of a, a routine for you. And it just, it gives you that permission to be like, okay, shed in the work energy, go into my date. And then when you show up to the date, another thing that I like to teach my female clients is to just three words, let him do it. Let him. I like that. Four words, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you'll get the four bit. That's okay. (laughs) Yes. Um, But yeah, he's he's not going to do it in the way that you would do it. And then as a fully competent, capable woman, I have things, I like to do things my way. I have my particulars. But when you're in a partnership, right? When you're in a partnership, though, you've got to be flexible with that. And so let him do it the way that he's going to do it and give him space to do it. Not just, well, I gave him five seconds and he didn't do it. You know, like just, this is the hard part for women who are, who are action, so you know, is to sit back and be patient. That is the hard part. Action's easy. The patience is the hard part. So if you're a woman who likes to challenge, try not doing anything as opposed to challenging yourself to do something and then watch what he does. Give him the space to do that because, you know, like you were saying, he may not, he's probably getting mixed signals because you're not really clear on what you want. And, you know, to, for him to try to interpret that on his own while you're like, I don't really know what I want, but I know I didn't want that when he did that, you know, like that's not really fair. So the, the patience, the holding back, the giving space to watch and see what he does, let him step up and be the man he wants to be for you, but you have to give him room to do that. You know, this is such an important topic because it is brought up so many times both men and women that in the beginning they're so quick to go he didn't do this he didn't do that because you know unfortunately as women we can fall a little bit into the attitude of well what did he not do instead of stepping into the energy of honoring and saying he did all these things that i've been craving a couple more things i need to get better about communicating and that's what's really powerful about your tips about offline dating is that it's real world because really in the end aren't we trying to meet someone that we actually spend time with and that's the part that I think people lose sight of because they're online so much they forget that your your ultimate goal is an in-person human relationship so we need to learn how to kind of balance this energy so we actually make room for somebody is how I've been feeling it Totally. And, and I will say, um, I have had a struggle with asking for what I need. And, you know, I think that that's so important to, to let someone know, you know, I'm, I'm working with a client right now and she's like, well, you know, I think when he does this, this means this and, you know, but I'd love him for, to do this. What do I do? I'm like, just ask him, just tell him we can't read each other's minds. It's already hard enough to communicate between the genders. Um, so to just, just be clear on that and also get clear in yourself of what do I want? You know, is this a a thing like annoying? Do I need him to always shut the cabinet doors in the kitchen or is that, you know, is that like its own topic or do I just let that go? (laughs) He's a great guy. I love that. Anyone, my, my sister's husband is the worst with cupboards open. So the joke in the family always is if she takes a picture in the kitchen is how soon someone's going to comment about all the cupboard doors. open, (laughs) And it's just, (laughs) We learn that that is not something worth complaining about. It it doesn't stop, and she still married the guy, but now it's become a family joke. So you know we have to learn that some of these things. How much do we have to control, and how much do we have to turn into a joke, a funny thing, just a personality quirk? Then we can move on. But I feel like so many times people get so stuck in what they want right now instead of the evolution. So you're talk about patience is huge so how do we like do we count to 10 backwards like how do we know how to just kind of freaking sit on our hands and calm down and let him rise up and know what to do because especially the super strong corporate women they're just used to just plowing through so is there something you know Beyond, I love your comments of, you know, get a spritz, get a moisture or a massage, take some time. But when you're in the date and you're trying to figure out what, what do I pass off to him? What do I give him 
room to do? What are some of those masculine things that she can surrender to in, in a way that will empower their connection, their relationship possibilities and see where it grows? Yeah. So I would say um, if you're in, if you're dating someone or you're in a relationship, um, you can also, if you're not dating someone or in a relationship, you can do these same things that I'll share um, to kind of like give guys, random guys, you know, the guy who just opened the door in front of you space to be the man for you that he wants to be. So um, yeah, I would just say like, maybe even just ahead of time, just taking like a couple minutes to yourself and, and defining what that, that means for you, what you would like. So that when it does come up in the moment, you're like, okay, no, I've already thought about this. Like, um, and think of it in a positive way. Like, you know, I love it when a guy holds a door open for me, or I love it when he helps me put on my jacket, if he sees I'm struggling, or I love those little things and then be open to those little things. And maybe it's something else, but the fact that you've okay, I like the little things that a guy does to make me feel cared for and provided for and doesn't even have to be monetary, you know? Um, and then watch for those little things. So kind of like be on the lookout once you made that and set that intention and made that declaration to yourself, be on the lookout to spot it, not just in the guy that you're dating or the guy that you're in the relationship with, but in all men in general. Oh, I like that. I just saw somebody make a quote. I cannot remember the exact wording. But basically, it was saying, you ask for something, now let it show up, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. give it a chance. So you actually really resonated clear with that message, and it really touched me. I wish I could think of the exact words, but it was a very clear message of, we, we ask for these things. We say, we, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a man that, you know, did open the door or walked on the outside of the sidewalk or took the extra steps of just making a point to have some chivalry. But then when it's there, we squash it, we stop it, it, you know, we turn away from it, we get uncomfortable because it showed up. And so I thought that was such an interesting comment this other lady made of just like, you've been asking for it, now let it actually show up and marinate. And then now you're bringing this up. And I think it's such a valid point that actually taking some time ahead to give somebody, and even if he doesn't open the door, it doesn't mean he failed the date, but it's a matter of saying, these are things that I want somebody to do. And when they do it, I need to stop, pause, and acknowledge so that they'll want to do it again. (laughs) You know, it's, I feel so strongly that every time we meet a new person, we're dealing with all the past people that maybe didn't appreciate it. So to give people a chance. So on that level, how do we help somebody see that maybe the last woman didn't want it, but the new woman does? <laughs> how do we kind of get that message across knowing that maybe the gal he dated before didn't like the door open and you're the one that does want it, but yet he never seems to open the door because she always turned him down for it. So how do we kind of make that shift of energy, whether it's somebody new or someone positive that you just happen to come across or they just happen to be holding the door open or not really sure how to hold the door open. There's a lot of little, little details. It's amazing that take a little effort. Yeah, I would say, um, that's a good question. And I kind of dealt with this recently in a guy I was dating who, um, kind of referenced past women and what they liked or his interpretation of what they liked. And he had changed his behavior to accommodate that and then was applying it to me. Whereas like, I was kind of thinking, well, what do you want to do? Like, you know, most guys love doing those things. You know, most guys, even if their last girlfriend didn't want them to hold the car door open for them, like if the guy loves to do it, he should do it. It doesn't matter. You're not with the girl anymore. So for, for the guy, maybe to reset and be like, what do I like to do? And then to just, that place as opposed to, well, these were the instructions I had for my last girlfriend. So therefore I will apply them to the next girlfriend. Like, don't be right. so robotic like that, you know, like, <laughs> I like that. it Reset didn't work buttons. out with the, yeah, it didn't get, work out with the last girlfriend and probably for communication reasons. <laughs> so, um, you know, get back to your center after you end things with someone and be like, what do I want? You know, we kind of get reprogrammed a little bit in every relationship or every, you know, even every, you could say date that we go on with someone, we get a little bit like, oh, well, you know, this, now interpreting this, and maybe I'll apply this, or, you know, what do you want? Well, who do you want to be? If you're the guy who, um, like I talked to a guy last night who met a woman online, and she basically used him to take her to Whole Foods 
for a grocery run. And he knew oh this. My goodness. Yeah. And he figured this out mid date. Cause he was like, that's weird. Like, why would we go to Whole Foods? It's 20 minutes away. And she like, wasn't interested in getting to know him. And then she wanted to make other stops. And it's really weird. Anyway. So he realized this in the middle of the date, but he still was a gentleman. He wasn't going to like, and I think this was very nice of him. I don't think I would have had the same reaction if I was being used, but like, he's not going to, he finished the date and dropped her off and said, Hey, look, you know, I understand what happened here. This is not cool. I don't really want to see you again, but that isn't going to taint his next experience of, well, every girl would just wants to be taken to the grocery store. Like that's ridiculous. You cannot apply a single situation like that to the entire female gender. Just like with the women I work with, if a guy cheats on you, that's horrible, but you cannot not trust the male gender as a whole because it happens. So get back to what you want. And if you are the person who holds doors open for people, even if your last relationship didn't want you to do that, then if you're not with them anymore, go back right. to doing that. I think that is so true. And sad, but so many people really do lump it all together. All matter is this. Like I even just should, this was last week, I did a survey on about online dating. And boy, you could tell the angry people on there. Some of those answers were so intense. And it was like, and it was very much an all men do this and all men this. And I'm like, oh, honey, I don't even know who you are. Thanks for the anonymous survey answer. But, oh, I just want to give you a hug because there was so much anger that it was everybody else's fault. And the thing is, is just that you have to reset. You have to remember what is it that you want. And if you are in a relationship with somebody who, denies you to be the man or the woman that you authentically in your core want to be, then you're cheating each other out of the real truth. And you're cheating the new person that's wondering where you are and wants to meet you out of what they could experience. And I think that's something to be really aware of and really in tune. So you're bringing up such important topics where stop and pause. If you have been in relationships, what is it that you liked and what you didn't like? But just because you did it for the last one doesn't necessarily mean you need to do it for the next one. What's your core essence? So that's really, that. I love that. Like everybody write down, I need to reset. Like really, what is it that I want to be? How, how did my mama raise me? As I always say, when, when a gentleman holds the door open, I'm like, oh, your mom raised you right. And every once in a while, I'll get a guy to turn around and go, it was my dad. <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Cause I just, again, this is hitting home for me. Um, and, in this guy that I dated who, who was like, had a lot of depth and we had a good connection, but in the day to day, it, it, like it, it would come up and he, he mentioned, you know, well, women in my past have always wanted to split the bill. Cause he like never actually like took me out on a date. And I even asked for that. And that actually is part of what ended the relationship is he was like, I've never been asked to take a woman out on a date. I was like, I've never had to ask for a date. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, maybe all the women that you used to date wanted you to split the bill, which I don't believe. I think that that was his interpretation of it. But what do you want to do? Like, cause last night I went out with a guy who, um, we had like a, a group meetup and he and I are just friends. And he's like, hey, Camille, what would you, do you want a, a glass of wine? I was like, sure, I'll take the Malbec. Thank you. He came back with a bottle of Malbec and he split it between us. Like, and just, and he was like, this is my treat, of course, which was just over and above and beyond. And not that guys have to do that kind of thing, but that was his pleasure. He loved doing that for me. So if you're the person, the man or the woman who loves to give to people, find your way of doing that and then find someone who appreciates that. Right. I learned something from my clients was they're looking for a generous partner and it's not generous. about the person spending a ton it was that being generous because I used to think generous meant oh that they just lavish you with all these extras and then it was actually my clients that brought it up and they said no it's having somebody that just does a little extra listens to what you said you liked thinks about the restaurant you mentioned you know make sure that you feel good that you're getting like if you really want some dessert they just take the initiative and do it or you know they don't rush you through it they're generous with their time they're generous with their focus they're generous with their their engagement with you and that yes. is that just really speaks to me what do you think about when you hear the word generous in courtship process 
Oh gosh, that's exactly the word that I used to describe the situation was generosity. Um, Cause it's not about money. It's not about lavishing. I mean, if your love language is that you love to give gifts to people, then that's, that's maybe what it can mean. For me, gifts is my last love language. So I, I want people's time. I want people's thoughtfulness. I want um, acknowledgement and then that kind of thing. The generosity of, I mean, for me, my time is my most valuable thing. So when someone gives me their time, especially if they're a very busy person, that to me is like, wow, I really need to realize that's amazing. Um, so yeah, so it's just, I think, being generous with um, your attention, your attentiveness. If you, if the woman you're dating drops that it's her birthday a week beforehand, make a note of it. You know, maybe you're not going to remember in the moment, but like those little things of, oh, she just mentioned it's her birthday. I'm totally going to forget this. Let me write this down because that's going to be a big deal to her that kind of thing, you know, those little, those little things um, that we can just go a little step or two extra on that may not even be monetary that show the other person that we're care that we care that we're thinking about them. You know, I love that. I just had a birthday and it really resonated with the people that cared enough to acknowledge even the friends that cared enough to say something. And, you know, it's funny, I have a kindergarten best friend that we aren't online, social media or anything, but boy, that girl every year, no matter what, she finds a way to find wherever I am to let me know. And it's the same thing on a romantic level. We want the person that we're dating, or maybe even somebody we dated in the past and it happens to show up on their phone. It's nice. The first message I got on my birthday was a guy I dated like, eight years ago and you know super fun guy we're still great friends but he was the very first person to help that he was in a future time zone <laughs> so he was up early but it was the fact that he didn't care whether we were together or not to say something it's just he was generous with wanting to say hey i want to be there to wish you a happy birthday it's taking the extra moment and that is such an important part of being generous and i think it's also really healing to the heart so many people have been injured through relationship processes that they forgot how to love again and how to be that loving, nurturing aspect. So I would love to hear from you on how do we show that when you're just out and about and you're meeting people, how do you kind of show your feminine or your masculine energy to make the other person see that you're approachable because you have a little more of that confidence in owning the energy you want others to see? So I would say as a woman, <clears throat> um, and again, I used to be the opposite. I, I touched on my struggle with masculine versus feminine. I used to be the woman who's like, oh no, you don't need to walk me home. It's fine. I got this. You know, don't do that. If you don't, if you really want him to walk you home, let the man walk you home. You don't have to prove anything to anyone, you know, that kind of thing. So I would say in showing my femininity, I'll kind of like, just hold back a little bit, sometimes like half a second. So instead of like, um, you know, if I'm walking behind a guy and he's opening the door, I'm like, huh, I wonder if he noticed me and knows that there's someone behind him. Because I just think this is interesting from a human behavior perspective. I and, agree. <laughs> and so sometimes, you know, the door's swung open and it kind of flies in my face and I have to be able to keep it open to go through it. Other times he totally saw me and he holds it open and smiles at me and it's a little moment and it's amazing. So if I were just to like charge through and just like be in my own head and like, well, I'm not gonna wait to see what he does and just like hold it open for myself, I would miss that moment. And it also like that can kind look of, real. yeah, I can kind of reprogram you to look for, again, those little things that people show you of how they're, how they're being generous, how they want to take the lead in, in helping you with something. I mean, I have been on like a Paris Metro and had two giant bags and was trying to get down the street and or down the staircase and like in like three different subways. This was a total disaster story. And like each time a Frenchman helped me with my bags and it was just like not even a question. He wasn't even like, you know, oh, hey, let's go out or whatever. He was just like, oh, madame, madame. Uh, like probably like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> but like, helped me with my bags down the stairs. It was just part of who they were. They just had those manners. Not that all French men do, but those ones did. It was just part of who they are. And like for me, um, as a woman, if I see someone upset, even if I don't know them, I will probably go over and make sure that they're okay. That's how I express my feminine energy. Or 
Um, if someone looks like they could use a smile, you know, those kinds of things that those are little ways that I express that, that feminine energy. So, uh, those are just some examples. I love that. And, you know, yeah, I'm dating a gentleman and he's out of town and I was coming back from an event and I just talked all the way on the phone while I walked home. It was about a mile walk home. And he's like, oh, it was so nice to walk you home. And I kind of giggled. And then I thought, yeah, he really did. He didn't physically have to be there, but I allowed him to be in that space. And then it made it more fun. It felt like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> You're thousands of miles away right now on a trip. But it felt like you were right here with me because I went and did my nighttime routine, took the dog for the walk. And, you know, and it's that moment where you can allow someone to connect, but also it shows that as a feminine, strong woman walking the streets late at night after an event, I'm power walking. But then I'm like, you know what? Somebody can be on the phone with me. And then to see the response afterwards where he's like, thank you so much for letting me walk you home. I felt like you were safer. And it's allowing that person to show up the way that we are asking. So just like you talked about in the beginning and seeing it and it's acknowledging. I was walking down the street today and I thought, two couples walking. One, she was walking on the outside and the other couple was walking with the lady on the inside. And I thought, I wonder how many people think about this. I was raised that the man walks on the inside. My brother is adamant that my boys were raised around that too. But, you know, sometimes we don't know what we should do. So it isn't really, it is powerful to stop and look. Like, as you even said, slowing down to walk in the door. And then when he does notice, you give him a reinforcement, like, that was awesome. Thank you. You know, you just kind of made it for each person. Totally. And for all the women who come after me and to um, negate all the women before me who were like, Ugh, you know, you don't have to hold it open for me or whatever. When probably deep down, I mean, who, who doesn't want a door held open for them? You know, like, let's be honest here. Like, yes, of course he knows you can open the door, but he wants to do it for you. And how sweet is that? Who would not want a little bit more of that in their life? So I think it's also being honest with you yourself of, okay, that was kind of nice. Okay, maybe I'll let him do that. Okay, I know I can do it myself, but I kind of like it when he opens the pickle jar or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then reinforcing that. I love what you said about reinforcing that with the guy um, showing appreciation and, and going from there. I mean, I saw, oh, I've got this funny story. Uh, and I ride the, uh, the L train in Chicago, public transportation. And this guy, it was like after work uh, when I was still in my corporate job and this guy was standing there and, and or I know, I'm sorry, he was sitting and a woman got on and he's like, oh, hey, would, would you like the seat? And she's like, oh, thank you so much. He then became like the seat finder ambassador. I am not kidding. Every time a woman came within like, you know, a foot of him, he'd be like, oh, there's, there's a seat over there or, you know, here, you can have this seat or you know, like, and he would just he was glowing within a couple of minutes of doing this because the man was on a mission to find seats for women. And he, yeah. yeah, he loved it. The women loved it. It was just a beautiful thing. So that's so cool. Well, you probably heard this story and I just saw it pop up again on my newsfeed of the lady that saw the cute guy on the train for a long time. It was all into his book and she'd always dress pretty casual, but she thought I better step it up. She started dressing nicer when she was getting on the train to go to work. And she just kind of kept increasing her quality of how she took care of herself until over quite a bit of time until he noticed and she gave him his car, her, like wrote him a note or something. And now they're happily married with kids, but she had to raise her own deserve of what she wanted. But she also realized she couldn't just blend in. She had to just show her feminine. She's like, I started putting on more makeup and, you know, putting on dresses in the morning instead of just showing up casual and making a point to be noticed. And it, it is powerful. And so here's this man trying to find people a seat because he's wanting to be noticed, but he's doing it in a loving, nurturing way. It makes such a difference. Totally. Yeah. I love that. Ah. That's awesome. I know. And that's what this is really about is stopping and thinking, what do we want? What do we want to reinforce? And how do we want to encourage a new partner to hit the reset button, to get that nourishment. But it really comes down to is what do you want? What do you desire? And most of the time, I feel like people aren't asking, nor are they receiving if they've never really thought about it. They just kind of assumed it would happen or they gave up on it. And I think the saddest part is when people give up 
on the little extra real deal TLC because it does exist. I see it all the time in my work and I see both men and women really wanting to give that next level of nourishment, but they've just been slapped so many times in the past that they've forgotten how to kind of reach the paw back out. So we do deserve to give that extra reinforcement to everybody. And you're really covering such important details and topics for singles just getting out there in the real world. Totally. Yeah. And, and again, you know, when you do it for yourself, like you, you release that outcome, you know, if you're the person who loves to do things for people, be the person who does things for people. Like, I don't care. I mean, you want to talk about slapped around, like I know you and I have been through total hell when it comes to relationships. If anyone could hold a lot of weight and, and bitterness, it could be us, but we don't like people. We learned lessons, but those people from our past have nothing to do with the people of our present or future. So come back to us. Who are we and what do we want? It's almost like if you hold that anything from the past against people of the future, that you're like, you know, they're kind of winning in a way. Whereas if you just come back to be exactly. yourself, yeah, it's like, yeah, well, cool. That happened. I'm never doing that again. I'm going back to me. <laughs> and uh, hey, you, know, you can't I like that. Going back to me, like write that down, going back to me. That's an awesome line there. Yeah, so <laughs> it makes such a difference. Now we're just about out of time. And so I would love, you're so good about action taking ideas. So what would be something to do in the next 24 hours to just dive in and just say, okay, I got to get this offline thing going. Cause you know, when I'm at an event, there are people I told clients to meet via the profiles that we have on our secret list, but they're not as excited as when they meet them and hear their laugh and see their smile. So getting out is really the key to finding that deeper connection and also how other people are feeding up your energy. So what is the tip that you have before we sign off for our time together of what to do to kind of just get this going? Sure. So I would say <clears throat> uh, two things. One, take a minute and just think about what you want. What kind of man do you want to be? What kind of woman do you want to be? What do you want to do for other people? What would you like to receive? And just think of some examples. It doesn't have to be all inclusive, but like, you know, again, I want to be the man who holds doors open for women. I want to be the man who gives compliments because that makes me feel good. Um, I want to be the woman who lets a guy um, hold the elevator door for me and then look him in the eye and say, and smile and say, thank you. And then take one step to allow that in your life and, and however it shows up. So it may not be someone holding the elevator for you. It may be someone holding the door for you. Maybe, um, you know, it's going to look a little different, uh, when you put it into action. Um, but, but just kind of release that outcome and just be and own and be that person that you want to be regardless of how the other person reacts. Cause we can't control that. I love that. That is so true. And I really encourage everybody listening right now, stop and just pull back the layers and don't think about all the past relationships and really hit that reset. What is it? How are you? And maybe you got to go back to that great high school relationship you had when you didn't know any of these rules and you just were the man or woman that you wanted to be or your favorite college, like go back to your happiest dating time and think about what were the things you enjoyed the most and what do you miss because that so many of those qualities are available in lots of great people we often forget that the you know most things are du not duplicatable necessarily but we all share a similar core essence and so allowing yourself to let those people show up is huge so Camille, you've just really brought up that need to give each new relationship a chance, even if it's just the guy holding the door and you smiled and made his day or the gal that, you know, sits there and says, Hey, I just want to learn how to calm the freaking down. <laughs> and the guy just kind of knows how to say, Hey, let me just take care of this. And then she can reinforce that. I mean, it's such an interesting role of learning how to find your rhythm. It's kind of that teeter totter that you're trying to find a way to kind of balance that out. So it makes such a difference. So I thank you very, very much for everything that you shared. Do you have any last little words you want to give to our awesome group? And we are excited what you'll bring to us in the fourth quarter. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's all I've got. Um, if they want offline dating tips, I've got, I've got tons of those too at masterofflinedating.com. But, um, but otherwise, I, I'm so, I love this discussion that we had. So thanks so much for having me, Jacqueline.
Absolutely. We're so excited to share. And at the end of the video, we'll have links to get to your website. And people just need to take action. There's so many awesome people out there. So put these tips and tools into place. And soon we'll be hearing about your newest love match. So thank you so much for everything you do for us. Thank you so much.